Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to TaiTrust live stream launch for Taiwan Offshore Wind Foundation Solutions. Taiwan External Trade Development Council is Taiwan's foremost nonprofit trade organization. We help Taiwanese manufacturers to export their products abroad and uh, to promote their products internationally through marketing, exhibitions, and trade missions. With 63 offices worldwide, we are Taiwan's foremost nonprofit trade organization. Many of you have heard about the offshore wind industry. You also, uh, some of you maybe are more aware about the uh, land wind industry. Regardless, in Taiwan now we are developing the offshore wind industry and we are one of the, uh, one of the biggest markets with the highest, uh, one of the highest potentials. Uh, the Taiwan government has established that by 2025 we want to reach a 20% uh, renewable energy target and the 5.5 gigawatt coming from offshore wind. So this uh, has brought together many uh, foreign companies. For example, you have heard of these global players of Copenhagen Institute Partners, CIP, uh, Orsted, also from both of them from Denmark. You have heard of WPD, this is a German company, and the Macquarie Capital Investments, they are here to, as developers, all to uh, help with the development of the Taiwanese offshore wind industry. So with that uh, little background, and I will also like to tell you a little bit that Taiwan has one of the uh, best wind, off offshore wind in the Taiwan Strait, and uh, it is comparable to Europe. And also, uh, we have the good high towers with 5.5 kilowatt uh, uh, hour per NT. So this is equivalent to about uh, 16 euro cent per kilowatt hour. So this is why today we have gathered together four companies that will share with you more about what they are, what their role is in Taiwan's offshore wind industry. Many of you have heard of the, the turbine manufacturers such as MHI Vestas and the Siemens Gamesa that provide the turbines. But uh, today we'll focus more on the subsea level, uh, more like underwater and the uh, towers and foundations and ROV so that maybe this area is something that is not so discussed at this moment. I hope that this will bring about a very uh, meaningful and fruitful conversation today. So with that, I would like to first welcome Mr. Andy Huang from CSBC Corporation. Mr. Andy Huang, uh, is, CSBC was founded in 1973 and it is Taiwan's largest shipbuilding company. So I'll give the floor now to you, Andy. Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Andy from CSBC. I'm a senior officer of the sales department. And today I would like to talk to you about CSBC offshore wind energy business development. Next, please. I will divide my brief report to three parts. The first part is uh, offshore wind energy business map. And the second part is the pin pile production line. The third part is the transition piece production line. Next. The first part, offshore wind energy business map. As you can see, our business map is built up by these companies. They are CCSC Coding, CDWE, TIPC, and CSBC. The foundation for TP and PP and template supply is handled by CSBC. Anti-corrosion for vessel PP and PP case is on CCSC Coding's responsibility. And CDWE and Demi Offshore is dealing with TNI. The maintenance of marine team, MIV and uh, like barge, is processing by TIPC, CDWE and CSBC. Next please. Our com uh, comprehensive marine and engineering service could separate in in two parts. For domestic capacity, we have double team for foundation, in pile, and transition piece. As the M team, they focus on investigating, designing, building, and constructing. We also have core logistic support like Taipei, Taichung, and Kaohsiung. Two marine operating vessels for energy replenishment still. CDW cooperate with Demi Offshore to provide offshore engineering expertise and ship types. 
like CIV, MIV, and CLV. The relationship between wind farm developers and CDWE is CDWE fulfilled with EPCI contract to developers and wind farm build mission to CDWE. Next, please. The second part is pin pile production line. This is the introduction of the pin pile production line warehouse. CSBC invests in and transform the original shipyard production line into dedicated production line for pin piles. The production process can produce full length piles. CSBC also set up a control center, input production history and quality inspection data for digital monitoring. The plan is to start serial production on March 2020. One working shift can produce six piles a month from June. Two working shifts can produce 10 piles a month. Next. These are, these are the equipment of the can manufacturing. There is melding machine, CMB welding machine, and plate beveling machine, and bending machine. Next. And these are the function of the equipment in the can manufa manufacturing. For the CMB welding machine, its function is long seam inside and outside welding, and shear key forming. The melding machine, it is for root chipping, and the plate beveling machine is for edge beveling. The last one is bending machine, of course, it's for bending roll. Next. These two equipments are in pile growing section. They are CMB welding and assembly station and welding platform. Next. The function for CMB welding and assembly station is can assembly. The welding platform equipment is for circumcising outside welding. Next. We have intelli uh, intelligent production control system in our entire production line. These are the monitor which can show all information we need on it. For example, this monitor shows the temperature and humidity of each PP production line circumstance. This one shows the can storage section. There is a can storage in the first and second position, so the blue light will be switched on. And the next one shows the edge mailing workstation. You can see the serial number of the can and the plate. Next. The third part is transition piece production line. CSBC cooperate with local steel manufacturers to fabricate steel structure according to the contract, laws, and regulations. CSBC also transfer our welders to the offshore foundation structure business. The, uh, next. The final assembly of the transition piece was complete in CSBC and delivered to the owner. The heavy cargo, key side and giant gantry crane on site can fulfill with the owner shipping requirements. Okay, this is the end of my presentation and thank you for your listening and I hope you all enjoy my introduction. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Andy. So as we have heard uh, about CSBC uh, for the offshore wind, especially now they are focusing on the pinpal production line and the transition piece production line. Of course, they offer other services and uh, being the largest shipbuilding company in Taiwan, you can also find out more information uh, in their company website. So that was very that was a very brief presentation, and uh, so we think that you have questions so you can see at the bottom of the screen uh, not to worry if you uh, use this QR code and fill out the questionnaire we will provide with uh, provide you with today's presentations and also how to contact our presenters so if you have detailed questions you may ask them uh, directly so thank you very much once again Andy and uh, our next speaker is uh, oh I'll also like to uh, tell you a little bit about Slido Slido 
here you have the Q&A section on the bottom in the middle. Uh, if you click on this one, you can uh, type in what questions you have. First, make sure to put the company that you want to address your question, followed by your question, and uh, lastly, your email. And uh, after our four presenters today, they will each choose one question to answer. So uh, this is the Slido. You can also use this QR code at any time and ask questions. Okay, so next I'd like to welcome Mr. Alan Chen from Century Wind Power. Uh, Century Wind Power is a subsidiary of Century Iron and Steel. They are one of the first manufacturers of domestic steel structures in Taiwan, uh, very high quality. So today, especially, he will focus on the offshore wind foundations, uh, what the company is doing. Thank you, and uh, welcome, Alan. Thank you, Gary. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Alan. I'm from Century Wind Power. So very glad to introduce our company to every uh, potential employers. So in this presentation, I will talk about several uh, critical abilities of CWP, including our uh, the incre including an introduction of the whole Century Group and our new production site in Taipei, Taiwan. So next, please. So in this slide, you can see uh, on the left side, CWP is the first subsidiary in the Century Group, which uh, was established in 2017. And the middle one company, Century Iron and Steel, CT is our mother company. And also there are other subsidiaries in the group. Uh, and uh, so the business of the whole uh, subsidiaries are all connected to the offshore wind uh, industry. For example, CWP is a foundation fabricator and the CBF focuses on project management. And uh, it is a joint venture between CWP and a uh, Danish uh, fabricator of lead industries. And the our mother company, CT, uh, is able to produce uh, foundation components. And the CHII is a logistic and inland transportation company. And the last one, CHWP, is a wind tower and a transition piece production company. So as you can see, Century Group is actually building a comprehensive supply chain in the offshore wind industry in Taiwan. So next, please. Uh, regarding our business, uh, CWP as a foundation fabricator, the service we offer is to produce a uh, fab fabricate offshore foundations, including <laughs> pin pile. Uh, sorry, okay, including uh, pin pile fabrication and the monopile and jacket foundations fabrication. And uh, so far, we have two ongoing uh, projects. So the first one is a pin pile project which is for the all state, uh, the uh, Great Zhanghua project. And the, the second one is a jacket foundation uh, fabrication project, which is a uh, Zhangfang Xidao project for the CIP. So we actually have experience in producing uh, the, the offshore wind foundations. So next, please. So an advantage uh, and, and critical advantage of CWP is that we have actually acquired a completed certification, including the quality management and the environment management and OHSC management. And the most importantly is welding in technology qualification, which is uh, ISO 3834. So uh, as you can see, CWP not only put emphasis on the certification, we also put effort on the uh, lifting our person, our local personnel uh, cap capabilities. So next, please. So as you can see, we have uh, provided several uh, professional training for our local staff, including welding training, PM training, and uh, uh, quality, quality inspector trainings. So this welding training center is our own dedicated uh, training center. We invited uh, professional trainers from Europe, such as Europe DK, to train our uh, welders. And our NDT inspectors are also trained by uh, professional European trainers. And our joint venture partner, Blood Industries, also provide professional trainings for our, uh, our subsidiary staffs. 
So uh, next, please. So uh, I have introduced uh, the professional uh, experts and the certification of CWP, and the remaining part will be an introduction of our new manufacturing site in Taipei Port, Taiwan. So uh, as you know, that offshore foundations are usually extremely messy and uh, very heavy. So we need a huge hinterland and the key site, which will be uh, our advantages as a foundation fabricator. It is the reason we need a new manufacturing site. So next, please. Uh, as you can see on the left lower picture, the Taipei port is a perfect location because it has a huge land to produce a massive uh, production yard and a proper place to produce a key site. So, uh, so far, we have completely finish the first yard, as you can see on the middle picture. And this yard is uh, 120 meters length and 250 meters width. So this is a massive uh, yard. And our other yards uh, are also will be, per, will be uh, finishing the construction by the end of 2021, we predict. So as you can see on the right lower uh, pictures, uh, when we finish the whole construction, there will be uh, there will be several yards and also other facilities. So next, please. So as you can see in the, this slide, we will have uh, the first yard and the second yard and the third yard, and a painting house. Uh, an uh, outdoor uh, acti activity area and a storage area and a heavy load key site. So, so far our secured land is over 19 hectares and our storage area is 9 hectares. And the most importantly, we have a dedicated heavy load key, which is, uh, which is over 300 meters length and the depth is around 14 to 16 meters. So next, please. So uh, to sum up this presentation, uh, CWP has an uh, ambition to become uh, one of the uh, top offshore foundation fabricator in Taiwan. And we also, has, and we also have interest to develop our business to other Asian regions and Europe. And we expect ourselves to be one of the top offshore foundation fabricator all over the world. So uh, with our experience and abilities and our strong uh, facilities, CWP has confidence to produce qualified uh, foundation fabrication uh, for, our, for our employers. Mm -hmm. So this is my presentation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to tell me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Alan. And uh, as we have heard from Alan, th their, their company has many certifications, including uh, ISO and uh, uh, among other international certifications. Uh, today, our four companies, they all have been internationally certified because as you heard from Alan, uh, their help, the, the industry standard is in Europe. And uh, so in, in Taiwan, we are actually learning from a lot from the European wind industry that is already very well established. And uh, so our government has uh, made a requirement to do localization. So many, as you have heard from Alan and also Andy, they are cooperating with major industries, uh, in, uh, especially in Europe, to develop this local industry here in Taiwan. So, of course, uh, a lot of international certifications. So thank you very much again, Alan. And I would like to welcome our next speaker, Mr. William Wu from Fortune Electric Company Limited. Established in 1969, they recently has reach, have reached 50 years. So congratulations, William. And uh, is one of the leading publicly heavy electrical machinery manufacturers in Taiwan. So William will tell us uh, how they contribute to uh, Taiwan's offshore wind industry. Uh, thank you, Gary, uh, for the introductions. And good evening, everybody. And uh, right now, I want to introduce Fortune Electric to you. You see on that page. As Gary mentioned, uh, we established in 1969. And uh, just recently, 2019, we just hit 50 years anniversary. 
and we are looking forward for another 50 years. And please see on the next page. So let me briefly introduce our main factory and the main office around the world. Please see the, the Zhongli factory, which is our also our headquarters. Mainly produce a 69 kb below transformer. And for the coin second plant, uh, which mainly produce 69 kb to 161 kb transformer. And please see on the next page. And for our going third plant, uh, which mainly focus on switch gear and uh, all the panels, and uh, please see on the Wuhan plant, which is in our uh, in China, that mainly produce 60, uh, 63 MBA or smaller power transformer. And for especially for our Taichung factory, uh, which formerly joined venture with the Hitachi of Japan and which 100% owned by the Porsche Electric since April 2019. And uh, also we have uh, several offices in overseas, uh, including the Pennsylvania office, and also for the California LA office. And please see our next page. And you can see on the chart that uh, we have done uh, plenty of uh, job uh, for the uh, land substitution project and also solar energy project. And especially today for the topic uh, for the wind farm project, you can see from the chart that 2019 we just finished our first, which is also the first for muscle one project, uh, 128 megawatt. And uh, also right now we are doing the second biggest project, wind farm on the four muscle two, uh, totally a 376 megawatt offshore wind farm. We do all the EPC work, uh, land substations. Uh, uh, all the TJB, ETC, that that, and please see on the next page. It's the, the chart just showed that the Fortune Electric has been devoted to, and uh, those are the ability we can do. Uh, we can do the onshore EPC work, transformer GIS. Uh, also, we can do transition pieces and transformer for the offshore stations. Uh, please see on the next page. Thank you. And the, these are the some energy. Uh, engineer turnkey, uh, which include the substation factory, and also we can build the hospital. You can see MRT systems and uh, solar uh, solar power uh, project, uh, water purification plant, and also see on the next page for the TPC work we have done. Thank you. And for the TPC work, uh, we can build the power plants, and uh, those pictures are just for the several projects we have done uh, for the last, last couple of years. I can see on the next page, we also do in the off islands, uh, you can see from this side, uh, Maju, which is in the off island, uh, the diesel engine generator and the uh, ETC that that. Uh, thank you. Please see on the next page. And you can see from the, uh, this is for the container for the PV box is for mainly for the solar energy projects. We can put the transformer, GIS, and uh, ETC uh, uh, equipment inside the container. And is 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 uh, much better for the management and also for the the OEM pro uh, project. And uh, please on that page. And thank you for listening. And we are looking forward to any opportunity of the collaborations. And if you have any question, please. Uh, let us know immediately. Thank you. Thank you, William. As one of the uh, leading electrical manufacturers, so they provide a lot of uh, different equipments that are required for electrification. So you saw that uh, William presented on the substation, also on transformers, also the solar panel. So uh, of course, then they have a lot of experience over the years and uh, are also developing. They were they took part on the first. Uh, offshore wind project, uh, as you heard, 128 megawatt was completed last year in December to, uh, 2019, and uh, right now it's uh, selling power already, and uh, they are now working in the, in the next one, which is uh, the FAWI 2, okay, for Mosa Offshore Wind 2. So thank you very much, William, and uh, now again I'd like to remind uh, the, our attendees attendees uh, that you can see the Q&A in the middle of the screen. So this will lead you to Slido. 
and the Slido you can use to ask any questions. This is a leading application for asking uh, questions through international events. And uh, first, just uh, please let us know who you're addressing your question to, followed by your question and also your email address. And uh, at the end of today's presentations, each will answer one question, but all your questions, all the rest of the questions will be replied through email. So uh, with that, I'd like to bring our last speaker for today, uh, Ms. Celine Lowe from DW Tech Co Company Limited. And uh, she w th they are the first uh, marine equipment manufacturer and supplier in Taiwan. And especially today, Celine will share with us on their ROV and uh, how this is employed in the marine uh, offshore wind. Welcome, Celine. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is Celine. On behalf of DW Tech, we'll introduce you our company and the product and service we provide. Next. Uh, DW Tech located in central Taiwan and just less than one hour car driving to the Taichung port. And we have started our business since 2008. We, DW Tech is ROV manufacturer providing marine and subsea system and equipment. In recent years, we provide integrating offshore ROV service for underwater survey, monitoring, and marine construction work in offshore wind farm sector. Next, please. These are HSE Q system we hold, including uh, ISO 9001. ISO 45000 and CE certificate to ensure DW Tech meets the international standard and the regulatory requirements. Next, please. Uh, DW Tech developed observation class and working class ROV, as well as the TMS, the IRO, the IRO frame. Uh, TMS is a test management system as a deep water solution. Next, please. And vessel is a very critical part of offshore service. Therefore, DW Tech also integrate the vessel offering into our service. The OSV, offshore support vessel, is mainly for the construction work and the state TV. Crew transfer vessel is to support the non-construction and OMM work. Next, please. So what really an ROV can do in offshore wind farm? Uh, it can do first is the GVI, general visual inspection, to observe the foundation, the welding, and check if there's any damage to the structure, the painting, the end of, or to check if the score protection is still valid or not, or to inspect the marine growth. Sometimes, if we find the welding is covered by marine growth, or uh, the client find that this creature may hurt the foundation or the structure, then next we will have to remove the marine growth. Second is the NDT, non-destructive testing such as the CP Pro rating, is to check if the NRD is still working or not. And others such as the, the inspect, to inspect the depth of real of the marine cable or to remove the marine growth by rotating brush or a water jet. Next, please. Uh, these are two cases we did in Taiwan Sweden for Taiwan's offshore wind farm. Uh, the first one is the BOP inspection. Let's see the second photos. It's the real-time real video for our ROV, including a one HD camera and four SD cameras. And we, we were doing a GVI of the anode. You can see the, the largest video show. And also, please see the second video of the right side. It's the CP probe to read the 
to check if the DNR is still working or not. And this project happened at can see at 1 p.m. in April 24 last year and with the 11.41 meter step. And the second is, is the it's a customized rotating brush we developed for our clients to remove the marine growth on the AWAC equipment. Next, please. Uh, the red survey is a project from the National Geographic Channel to find a Germany plan which was dropped out during the World War II. And our engineer visited UK last year to support our partner to integrate a high-tech 3D real-time imaging sonar onto our ROV. And our ROV is also support as a, as a material to introduce what is the ROV to, to the junior high school student in UK. Next, please. And what you see in previous cases is the investigator 19. It can take one manipulator installed on a tooling skin. And the largest one is the more new. It can take two of our manipulator to do some coordinating work. And the smallest one is the investigator 30. Uh, this guy now is in second nuclear plant of Taiwan Power Company to clean the cooling water tank. As everybody knows, uh, no human being is allowed to enter into a nuclear field. Next, please. Uh, Tech is also one of the leading suppliers of the subsea connectivity systems including a wide series connector like high power or power battery or internet, power internet, and also the mini low profile. And also the dry series like including the fiber optical and metal shell or the hybrid metal shell connectors type. And also the penetrator we can fabricate in our facility. And also we can do the termination work like such as the uh, cable splits in a field. Next, please. And thank you for your listening and feel free to add it, to contact us if you have any questions or inquiries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Celine. And as we heard from Celine, especially today, she uh, shared with us on the remote operator vehicle ROV and uh, how this applies uh, in the marine ecosystem. And uh, also, their company also can provide a subsea connector, uh, among other services. So yes, uh, the same. If you have any questions for Celine, you can uh, contact her. And uh, that's why I would like to remind you of the questionnaire. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see the QR code. If you fill this out for us and uh, return it to us, we will provide the presentations today. And uh, you can study, and uh, you can contact the the people that uh, are presenters today. Also now I would like to go into the Q&A session through Slido. And uh, once again, the presenters please choose only one question. If we have uh, more time allowed, we can go to, into a second session. But for the first session, please just one question each. So first, uh, please, uh, Andy Huang from CSBC Corporation, can you tell us which what is the question and the, the answer? Okay, um, I will pick the question from Mailing. Uh, which, what is the production progress of CSBC for a foundation and pin pile, and the capacity per year? Uh, okay, we have both production line for TP and PP, and have already been delivered on June sixth. Our capacity for PP is around seventy two pin piles and forty eight TP. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. And uh, uh, our next question for Alan Chen from Century Wind Power. Alan? Yes. Yeah, so regarding uh, our question, 
is to summarize the advantages and our future plan. So, uh, yes, CWP is the only one company which has a dedicated offshore sure, of a heavy load key site and uh, enough hinterland in the north of Taiwan. And uh, our oh, also we have the the largest production yard in our uh, in our new production site. And then the other advantage is that we have a comprehensive support from our other subsidiaries, uh, including including the transportation, logistics, and uh, like a project management. So uh, regarding our, the the future plan, uh, currently we focuses on our local business because our government just released the rules of the phase three and the zonal development. So we like to to develop our business in Taiwan. But in the meantime, we also put an eye on the other Asian regions because we have interest to develop our uh, overseas business to the countries which has uh, potential offshore foundation development uh, opportunity, such as Japan or Vietnam. So this is my answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. And the uh, uh, next question for Mr. William Wu from Fortune Electric Company. Uh, so I think I will pick the from Alex Tina in time. I think uh, I see the two questions that uh, you asked. Uh, first of all, is briefly describe the advantage of the Fortune Electric, and also uh, what is the future of the wind industry in Taiwan. And I will first address the first question. This question is the advantage of the Fortune Electric. We have been done uh, several projects that is uh, Formosa 1, which is uh, Formosa 1 and 2. Ongoing projects for Formosa 2. I think we have been experience on this uh, wind farm uh, project. And also, uh, we're asking for the future industry, uh, wind industry in Taiwan, I would say uh, in 2025, uh, which is phase three. We are mainly focused on phase three. Uh, a lot of projects will be coming up. And also, we are not only uh, desired on um, Taiwan project or Taiwan market, and we are looking for the overseas projects, uh, not only under the localization policy. Uh, we are looking forward and uh, hope to have the overseas buyer and uh, also for the um, experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, William. That was very clear. Uh, we, we heard also from William and Alan that uh, they both talked about Vietnam, they both talked about Japan. Actually, if you have been paying closely, uh, at close attention to this, uh, Orsted, Orsted has four sites that they are developing here in Taiwan, and uh, they uh, are now in Japan to also helping to do the offshore wind. And uh, also Vietnam, this is something that are, the government is looking into very closely. And uh, so for this reason, uh, Taiwan also wants to be uh, wants to lead in this industry, and uh, we are doing our our best and uh, hopefully with the localization everything just uh, move forward and this will be a, a bright new industry for Taiwan and um, next uh, is Celine Lo from DW Tech uh, last question is can we use diver in offshore wind farm and mm -hmm. honestly is the most question that we are asked mm -hmm. uh, Comparing to the ROV, honestly, uh, diver can do more complicated work. Uh, however, if you consider the safety issue, because we have to prepare the full support equipment to ensure diver safety, and also the spare equipment, and sometimes we have to prepare the spare of spare equipment, and even after the mission, the divers has to stay in the decompression chamber for a week to weeks, and it depends on upon the divers' working time. Therefore, so if you use diver, uh, that will not be a common way than using an ROV. Uh, the second is if we lose a diver, it's a tragedy to a project and to a client and his family. However, if we lose an ROV, 
we can just recover the ROV and repair it and then proceed for the next mission. Thank you. Thank you very much, Celine. Uh, very good questions and answer. I looking at the time right now. We still have uh, we still have time for a second round of questions. So I'd like uh, our presenters to uh, look for another question from your Slido, and uh, the same, please, as before. So you can take a little bit of time and uh, please tell us which uh, second question. And again, the same format. Uh, Andy first. Okay, I will. Uh, I'll pick the another question for Mayli. Uh, could CSPC provide any other steel production for offshore wind business? Uh, yes, we are interested in all uh, steel production like pre piling, uh, template, ripper, and even OSS topside. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Alan. Oh, oh yes, let's hold on. Okay, there's Alan. Alan? Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, so currently um, we don't have a uh, further question, but I would like to talk more, talk more about the, our, our facilities. Right. Because, uh, I think we can introduce more. Mm -hmm. So um, so in our production site, the, the yard is uh, very massive. The, the height of our yard three is over 100 meters. And our first year is over uh, 15 meters high. And uh, the heavy load key site and our storage area, uh, the bearing capacity of our heavy load key site and the storage area is 20 tons per square meter. So it represents that we have uh, very advanced facilities to produce uh, offshore wind foundations. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Um Thank you, Alan. Def definitely, you, you have a, you have to uh, focus on the how how big the company is. Today, we brought to you these companies, and they're already very well established. Because, of course, uh, to work with the foreign developers, they want to make sure that the Taiwanese companies are not going to not going to just uh, go under. So, so this is why today all four companies, and you have just heard from Alan that uh, their company. The, the these sites that they are developing are very big, are quite massive, actually. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, William Wu from Fortune Electric. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for today. And uh, I don't think I have any questions. D did you have a second question? Uh, I think I just responded uh, for the second question will be the uh, future of the wing uh, project. Uh -huh. I, think I just respond that uh, with uh -huh. the I think on the phase three we are only we are not only focused on the phase three but also on the uh, offshore project from the other countries that uh, will provide it and I think we will provide it the uh, experience our experience and also the equipment. And thank you. Yes, and we also heard that during William's presentation. And uh, our uh, last one, Celine Lowe from DW Tech. Okay, the second question is, how does RV work underwater? First of all, RV is a test vehicle and controlled by the service pilot. And all the signal, video, power, and data log is transmission by the tester. And RV is deployed from the vessel. First, you have to find out where is your target, the foundation. And this time, we, we may use the scanning sonar and, or, and also check the heading. And second is to approach the target by using the multi beam. For example, today we are going to expect the VN node number 112 as the south side of the foundation. Then you just approach to that node and to start your project. And finally, recover the ROV and our supervisor will 
issue the daily report to the client after every shift. Thank you. Thank you, Celine. And so today, as you have heard from our presenters, uh, we brought to you the four main companies. Uh, some of them are in the shipbuilding, others are doing the foundations, including PinPal and the transition piece. Uh, also, another company, Fortune Electric, is doing focusing on the electrical machinery. And uh, also, uh, Celine Lowe just uh, shared with us about their ROV. So I hope that today's uh, presentations were very interesting and very fruitful to you. And uh, I would like to um, now remind you again of the questionnaire. You can see this QR code. If you haven't done so, please make sure to do it and uh, submit it to us here at TITRA and uh, we'll provide you with today's slides. So uh, again, uh, many greetings from Taiwan. Uh, we, we over here at TITRA will host future live stream lunches and uh, uh, we welcome you to join us. And so if you found that today's presentations were fruitful and uh, meaningful to you, um, when we make the YouTube available, please go ahead and like it and also follow us and uh, join us for our uh, future TITRUST live stream launches. So many greetings from all of us here in TITRUST Taiwan and uh, goodbye for now. Thank you all. <laughs>